and but in '87 we started off, and I did a number of laps, and the vibration I had on the car, unfortunately, um, through accident or just fitting, um, some lead weights came off uh, the front wheel, and uh, I couldn't see going into the corners, and the steering wheel was, you know, doing this around the circuit. My wrists were aching like there was no tomorrow. And I could barely hang on to Nelson at that time. I was really struggling. So I just made the call. I just said, I, I just cannot continue. And the whole car was bouncing at the front as well under braking, which was terrible. And so I came in for the pit stop with 20-something laps to go. I think it was about 23 laps to go. Went out on the tires, and I rejoined something like 23, 24 seconds in arrears. And then I settled in uh, to a rhythm, and I thought, well, you know, I've got to pull a second a lap to actually get there with one lap to go or so. And I just decided to do qualifying laps, not race laps, qualifying laps. Um, I extended the circuit at Stowe and Club <laughs> and, you know, uh, Abbey. And, you know, it was just the most sensational, I think, in the last 15 laps of the race, I lowered the track record 11 times. And what people don't know is I was being radioed, but my radio wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't working quite well. Yeah. They were telling me to slow down, and I was running out of fuel. And I could see on the dashboard I was minus two liters. And but the crowd was just going bananas. I mean, after uh, probably three or four laps coming out of the pits, everyone was doing the mental arithmetic and thought, well, if I could keep going at this pace, it's going to be close at the end. And, of course, it just built, and it built, and it built. And I sort of could see him when I was coming out of church and onto hangar as he was going into Stowe. And I thought, oh, I've just got just to gotta go harder and harder. And the turbos were getting hot as well. So that wasn't real good because I had the wick turned up as quick as, as high as I could. And I was being told to slow down. I was being told I was run out of fuel. I was allegedly being told to hold station. And, uh, and anyway, um, you know, I knew when I got to Nelson that he wouldn't play fair. So I had to plan a strategy which was basically good old English term, uh, shit or bust. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Um, well, basically, sell him a dummy. Sell him a dummy down the straight where he really thought that I was going to come on, attack him on the left or the right. And I sold him a dummy that I was going to attack him on the left. And I waited, but I had to time the closing of it, and I waited until I saw his head go to the side, which I had to do with the cars then to see properly behind. And then he committed and moved, and then spontaneously went and switched and managed to get alongside him then before we came to Stowe. And we touched over 200 miles an hour going into that corner, but I was on the inside. And it was a fantastic win. Uh, the engine blew up, as you know, on the slowdown <laughs> lap and melted. And I ran out of fuel, too, which is obviously true. And as you know, too, half the team never spoke to me again. <laughs> well, I think speechless is the right word, isn't it?